Gypsy Daniels, born 1903 to 1967. He had total bouts of 166 fights, 93 wins, 42 knockouts, 47 losses, with 13 draws. Now, he was one of 13 children born to an athletic father by the name of DJ Daniel. He played for the rugby and a team in Wales. I'm Scrapbook Boxing, and I would like to go through the career of Gypsy Daniels with you right here on the Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. Let's take a look at this England heavyweight. Now, Gypsy Daniels was promoted by James J. Johnson. James J. Johnson controlled New York's Madison Square Garden, and he had Gypsy Daniels dressed like a gypsy. He wore a scarf, head wrap, as well as large round earrings. You see, James J. Johnson wanted to create ticket sales, and he figured this gimmick would attract onlookers to all the fights of Gypsy Daniels. Because never before has there been a gypsy who climbed into a boxing ring. On October 27th, 1924, Gypsy Daniels would be in the ring with Phil Scott. Now, Phil Scott was a very good fighter. He was in the ring with Pimo Carnera, among others. And he would have a fight in Liverpool Stadium. Gypsy Daniels would defeat Phil Scott. And that would put most onlookers on notice. Because as I stated, Phil Scott was a very good fighter. January 30th, 1932. Gypsy Daniels would be in the ring with Pierre Charles. Now, Pierre Charles was a Canadian heavyweight. And he would lose to Pierre Charles. Minor setback. But Pierre Charles was known in a boxing circuit. So James J. Johnson would then put him in the ring with Walter Nucio. And he would put him in the ring July 31st, 1931. That would be a fantastic fight. And it would re-recognize Gypsy Daniels as a possible contender. But on Saturday, February 25th, 1928, Gypsy Daniels would be in the ring with the Black Yulin a German heavyweight by the name of Max Schmeling. Now, Max Schmeling was 22 years of age at the time of this fight, and Gypsy Daniels was 25. They would fight at Frankfurt, which is located in Germany. And I got news for you. Gypsy Daniels was starch. Max Schmeling was such a ferocious right hand that he would fall in the very first round. But not as quick as Max Melling would face Joe Lewis in 1938. No, no. Joe Lewis would knock out Max Melling quicker. But this was some knockout as well. Now, Gypsy Daniel would also be in the ring with Jack Stanley. And he would defeat him in 15 rounds on Saturday, August 11, 1928. Now, Max Melling was known as the Black Yulin. He was born September 28, 1905. He died February 2nd, 2005. He was 22 years of age when he fought Gypsy Daniels. He had a total fight career of 70 fights, 56 wins, 39 knockouts, and he was stopped a few times. And he lost 10 fights. Now he would meet up with Gypsy Daniels. The first time. December 2nd, 1927. And he would defeat Gypsy Daniels. So he thought it was safe to climb back in the ring again. February 25th, 1928. And I gotta tell you. This fight was something else. Because Gypsy Daniels would walk straight to Max Schmeling in a straight line. And he would keep the pressure on him. And he would get him out of there with a straight right hand. Knock him flat. And one astonishing round. Now Max Schmeling 
would somewhat redeem himself. He would get in the ring with Polino Escadon. Johnny Risco, they called him the Cleveland Baker Boy. He'd be in the ring with Mickey Walker. Mickey Walker would be known as the Toy Bulldog. And he would become welterweight champion when he beat Jack Britton. And he would swap that title back and forth with Pete Lacho. But he would move up to middleweight division. Start off fighting Jock Monroe. And he would eventually get an opportunity after facing Harry Greb. Tiger Flowers. He would defeat Tiger Flowers and become the middleweight champion of the world. Well, he thought he could move up and challenge heavier fighters. Well, he did. He fought fighters such as Tommy Lockman and other great light heavyweights. But he would challenge Jack Sharkey, take him to a 12-round draw. And two weeks later, Jack Sharkey would become heavyweight champion in the world. But Mickey Walker would face Max Schmeling and be stopped. But Mickey Walker was a fascinating fighter and he would be an opponent of Max Schmeling. Man, I tell you, you can't make this stuff up. They don't make these kind of fighters anymore. Max Schmeling would face Jack Sharkey. And a fight between Max Schmeling and Jack Sharkey was very interesting. Because Gene Tunney, after facing Tom Heaney from New Zealand, that would be Gene Tunney's title defense after he would defeat Jack Dempsey for the heavyweight championship belt. He would relinquish his title. And it would create a tournament. And Max Schmeling was in that tournament. But you would have Jack Sharkey and Tom Lachlan fighting for the belt. And Jack Sharkey would defeat Tommy Lachlan. So he would have to face Max Schmeling. And Max Schmeling would claim that Jack Sharkey would hit him low. And Max Schmeling would become heavyweight champion of the world by default. Now eventually they would fight again. Jack Sharkey would win. But Max Schmeling would ultimately come out on top. Because he would get other lucrative paydays in the United States of America.